Sonny. Joey. Pops up below. Got some goats in the Get place. ready for a shakedown. Prepare for a shakedown. We from Philly where they clap like huddles when they break down. Get ready for a shakedown. We underdogs, my guy. Kinda used to all the hate now. Prepare for a man, y'all get it. My QB got swag, my wide out is award winning. This fly was fly. Joey and five double O. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Here's a quote you can sing back. Shake squad up and don't be a dingbat. It's a shakedown. Don't you frown. It's a shakedown. Here comes Philly shakedown. Let's go. Hey, 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 what's going on, everybody? This is the Philly Shakedown Podcast, episode 53. We're back this week. He's Philly 500. You can't see him. You can't see us, okay? We're getting ready for the offseason. We're getting ready for what's about to happen, Philly 500. What's going on, bro? What's happening, man? Sorry we're late. My sausage fingers got in the way of the live button. (laughs) I get blamed for everything. Oh, man. What's going on, everybody? How you doing? Dude, What's so no, nah, we're dude. I'm I'm feeling good, man. It's uh, you know, obviously we're waiting for this big game, the super. We're waiting for the Super Bowl to happen between, um, obviously two teams like the Bengals that you know have changed their teams in a year and a half to two years, and the Rams that fully loaded, um, giving away a lot of draft capital and cap space, and a team that's ready to go. So just just quickly, um, how, what do you think about this matchup for the Super Bowl? Just how excited are you? That's two teams that. Really, you could probably go for either one, but who do you want to win this game for the Super Bowl? I I, I slightly, probably slightly, is pulling for uh, for for Burrow and the Bengals. I I just think that would be such a great Cinderella story, mm. four win team, turn it around in one year. I, I I like that, but at the same time, I like Stafford a lot. You know, I I think people always say he's overrated, he stinks, and and I've I've always thought he was better than what people say he is. So. I wouldn't mind seeing him win a Super Bowl, but most likely I'm going to bet the Bengals heavy. You know? Yeah, like for me, it's 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 hard for me because I, I I'm probably going towards the Bengals just because you know this is a big turnaround for that franchise and for them to win a championship it would be fantastic. And even though I like Matt Stafford and I think he deserves to you know win something in his career, I mean I hope I mean I'm good. I'm I'm kind of rooting for both sides a little bit, but probably the Bengals just a little bit more. I I, I just want to see a good game, and I'm just like. Thank God it's not the same teams and it's not Brady again. And, you know, we're getting different teams in. So that's really cool. And um, I like Cooper Cup a lot, too. So I, I, oh, I wouldn't yeah. mind seeing him win. Uh, everybody in the chat, appreciate sure being here. Paul, Caleb, what's going on? Rex, we have a lot of people in here. Much love to everybody that's coming into the stream. Um, yeah, I'm late. It's my fault, obviously. Um, actually, Philly 500 reminded me that I was late. So it is my fault. So. That's Usually that. it's my fault, but today it's not. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's it's a little quiet. I mean, we were getting some, you know, some bits and pieces of information on some rumors here and there, but um, there has been some rumors about Howie Roseman. You know, you know, we had the Senior Bowl this week. Obviously, you know, this is where all the GMs, you know, show up and you know, kind of see like where they're scouting and what you know position. Um, and it looks like Howie Roseman's looking at quarterbacks, which we're kind of not surprised, mostly in um, Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis, uh, two quarterbacks coming out in this draft. So I want to hear your thoughts on that in general. I I think, I mean, we heard that he was following, like wherever Malik Willis went, Howie Roseman was following behind him yeah. uh, the other day. He was everywhere Malik Willis went, and I was like, what? What is with this guy? So I went, and I did a Philly reaction. I ha- I still got to edit it. And I was watching this Malik Willis. I'm going, you know what? This kid's got a lot of talent, like a lot of talent. He's got a big arm. He's fast. Uh, he, In some ways, he looks like a right-handed Mike Vick to me. So I think the Eagles could be interested in a quarterback. However, I, I can't believe they would take a, a quarterback like Pickett or – Willis in the first round. I, I just can't believe it. So they would have to f- be second round picks, and then I think there's a chance. Well, here's the thing: are you are you comfortable with them picking a quarterback in the second round that you could have potentially have put another position on the field that could start for you? Why I mean, not? That's what I'm mean, saying. Why not? I, I mean, mean, we do it anyways. Uh, you know, I like 
Well, sure, why not buy? We could just draft another backup quarterback. Why not? <laughs> well, I mean, but that's we what do I'm, it all the time. But I'm saying, but that's what I'm saying. Though I'm saying, isn't that a waste though to draft a quarterback? Yeah, in the first, of course it's round. a waste. It's a, so it's a big waste. You know, like people will say to me, "Oh, well, you know, you you didn't like the Jalen Hurts pick. Now you regret saying that." I'm like, no, it it because it, it never was about Jalen Hurts. It was about the strategy that you don't waste a second round pick on a guy that you think is a backup. So, yeah. yeah, I would say no. Um, I would say draft a draft a player. Although, I, I got to tell you, I think this Malik Willis is very talented, though. So, I, it really comes to a question of do you believe in Jalen Hurts? If you, if you think that Jalen Hurts isn't the future and you want to b- develop this kid, I think he would need two years. You'd have to let him sit for two years. But – um, I yeah, you're definitely wasting a, a spot where you could get a player that could have immediate impact. I don't think they'll draft a quarterback. I think they're gonna. I think that tr- they may trade for one, but I don't know about drafting. It, it, but I don't know. You you don't know what Howie Roseman's thinking. Right. I just don't no. know what he's thinking. No, you don't. I mean, like you know, we before the 2021 season, we name you know we didn't get a starting quarterback. We we didn't name a starting quarterback for weeks, even through OTA's training camp. Then like probably the week before, the few days, I forgot when we did. I think it was the the first weekend before the game we announced a starting quarterback. Soon as the season ends this year, we name a starting quarterback like that instantly. And then before that even happens, at the end of 2021, we're you know, Howie Roseman is personally scouting Kenny Pickett, Sam Howell at these games. And then still after naming, but still after naming a starting quarterback, he's still out scouting quarterbacks. Well, it's not just that he was, the reports weren't just that he's scouting these records. It's that he was enamored and he was following Willis everywhere he went. That makes you wonder, like, why? Why so you know, why is he not looking at the linebackers, you know, or something else? I don't I have no idea what this guy's thinking. Howie Roseman is like the like the wild card. You I you don't know what he's thinking. Whatever he says at the press conference, I wouldn't put a lot of a lot of uh you know, I wouldn't take that with a I take it with a grain of salt because he told he was he's capable of doing anything. I have no idea what he's thinking, dude. I have but, no idea. It, it would not surprise me if we <clears throat> traded for Russell Wilson. It would not surprise me at all. But I'm saying this, okay? So you, if you know you're set at quarterback, you're still. Uh, is it weird that he's actually looking for quarterbacks? If you're set stone on one quarterback right now, in the first second rounds, that where you're looking to get one of these yeah, guys. If, if if Hurts is the guy, and then why why waste the first or second round pick if if you think that he's the guy? You're young enough. He's young enough where you shouldn't have to worry about it. So that tells you if you're reading if we're reading into it that that maybe they're not set on Hurts. I mean, I don't know else yeah. how to take. If, if it, now that now I say that saying this personally, I don't think I would waste a first round. I wouldn't draft a quarterback in the first round. I right. do think Willis is an intriguing prospect. I think he's got a lot, a lot of upside. Um, second or third round, maybe, but that would only be because as a, that would only be an insurance policy. The the real question is is what are they going to do in free agents? That you know, in terms of quarterback, because I think that'll tell us all. If they don't even attempt to go out and get a guy in free agency, I don't think they're going to go get a quarterback early. Yeah, I mean, we already hear in that, you know, obviously Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be available for trade, looking for, you know, they're looking for a trade partner right now. And then we have Russell Wilson. And I saw your tweet. Okay, I saw your tweet the other day. Damn okay, right. So, you saw so, that tweet. <laughs> so Russell Wilson was at the Pro Bowl. You know, they were doing like the little testing where you kind of throw against, you know, these targets and you get points in a certain time limit, That's you right. know. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Russell Wilson looked really good. And, and look, I, I've never said that Russell Wilson it, it can't play. Okay, he can play. But I'm just saying for the financial bind that the Eagles are in right now to go for this typical player that's over 30 years old, we don't know how many more years he could play, and do we have enough time to build around him? Because as soon as you trade for Russell Wilson on how many picks it's going to cost us, okay, then I don't know what they're going to do because it's just this financial bind that the Eagles are in with the draft picks, with the cap space right now. Like, they they have to build this roster. So I understand, like, your point of view on, like, yeah, if they grab this guy, like, just imagine if all the time he would have to throw – 
and having this offensive line here in the building already would probably intrigue him a lot. So, I mean, what are your thoughts I, on I'm, Russell Wilson? I, I'm day to day. I, I'm day to day. Like I keep going back and forth. Like, right. like you know, on one side I feel like it's it's like the you know hurts. Give him another year. Let's see what he can. And then it's like the other part of me is like. If I put Russell, and this is what I keep thinking about when it comes to Russell Wilson, if I put him behind that line and we were in that playoff game, could we have won? And I just keep thinking, yeah, I think we would have. And and if he gives me, if I could get five good years out of Russell Wilson, it's worth doing. If I could get five years. Now, I don't know if you can, but at the same time, it's going to cost you a lot. Now, I think I saw something. If you wait till March, he's only going to count against the cap nineteen million dollars. Nineteen million dollars for a quarterback is not a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but it's not a lot of money comparable to some of the other quarterbacks' cap hits. Carter Carson Wentz was thirty-five million dollars in dead money last year. So, mm -hmm. I think I think Russell Wilson is. He's to me, it's intriguing. I, I don't know. I, I I go back and forth because I also feel like you you know maybe we should give Hertz another year, let him develop. So I'm I'm really wishy washy on this subject right now because um, I look at Russell Wilson. And I just I just I know what he's capable. Of. I know what he's capable of if he's healthy and he's got a line. So what do you need to if you make a trade for Russell Wilson? Do you what do you need in this league to win championships? Do you need an above average defense? Do you need an average defense with a high profile offense? Is that you know what I mean? I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I think immediately you're an instant contender. You hmm. you fix up your defensive line, and I think you're a contender. Look, we look at every team that was in the championship game, including the Bengals. None of those teams, all those teams had holes. Right. They all had different holes. That that that's the great thing about an elite quarterback is is that he can hide some of the deficiencies. You still, I think, you still would need another wide receiver. I still think you need to beef up your defensive line. You got to get better at the defensive line. I still think it would be nice if they, you know, if they could get a linebacker, um, you know. But yeah, I, like I said, I, I I'm not, and I I know because people are gonna say, why do you why are you giving up? For, I'm not giving up on Hurts. I, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Russell Wilson to me is a elite quarterback that is an exception. Maybe we should. I don't know. I, I, I I'm wishy washy. Tomorrow I'll be like, nah, we should keep Hurts. I, I go back and forth right now. You know, I don't know what the right answer is. Um. Most likely, you what probably is it gonna keep Hurts. What is it? What is it going to? What is the trade? That's what's the what's the draft picks you're going to give up for Russell Wilson? I would give up. I would give up maybe two ones. That would be it. And see, my my other thing is I want to keep Hurts. I don't want to trade Hurts. I want to keep Hurts behind Russell Wilson and let him learn and develop. Two ones for what? Two Russell Wilson straight up. Y yeah, two for this year. Mm -hmm. Two first rounders for 2022. Yeah. 2022 yeah. draft. I still got I still got first round pick left, That's and then tough. I got my first round picks next year. Yeah, I would do it. I, I, two ones if this year, like 15 and 19, and then I keep 16. I still could get a, a linebacker. I still have. You know, he's only going to be 19 million against the cap, but I want to keep Hurts though because I want him to to develop behind Russell Wilson. So that would be my plan. But I yeah. don't know. We'll see. Yeah, that's tough for me. Two ones and, and one draft is tough for me. If it was like a one, a two, and maybe a first next year, maybe. I mean, I maybe. I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe a first, a mid-round pick this year, maybe a first next year. I, don't, I mean, there's a bunch of combinations you go. I mean, I was hearing like three first-round picks, and I was like, no, there's there's no way they ask him price. I mean, maybe they ask him price would be <laughs> that where it will start, definitely. But, I mean, Russell Wilson says he is exploring his options um, if there is options out there. Um, so because Seattle's trying to figure out if they're going to do clean slate or they're going to build off of what they have still. Think, so think about, think about a couple of things to think about, right? One, we saw the Bengals win four games last year. They're on the, in the Super Bowl. They may win a Super Bowl. They may win a title. Okay. So you can turn around that quickly. In the Tampa Bay game, we played bad defense in the first half, but in the second half, we weren't too bad. We weren't too bad at all. Right. And then third, imagine if 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 with Brady gone, 
Rodgers goes somewhere like in the AFC, who who's the quarterback? Who's the big quarterbacks in the NFC? It's wide open. Yeah, it is yeah. for anybody for a lot of teams. So so you do you want to take advantage of that situation where you may have a weaker conference and the road to the to the bowl may not be hard or as hard. I, I should say it's always difficult to a certain point of view, but I mean. And, and I and I'm saying this like to everybody listening. It is it is February, right now. I my mind works like I go through every possible scenario over and over again. And then sometimes I'm like, yeah, I like it. Then sometimes I'm like, nah. And then I see things fall a different way. Most likely, they probably keep hurts. But it, it if if Russell Wilson became available, just saying if I I have to think about it. I have to. Yeah, I, I mean, it could it could happen. I mean, uh, if if there's enough interest there to where I mean, the Eagles, if the Eagles do make a phone call, they're going, you know, uh, they're going to see what they can give up. So, I mean, if it takes two ones for this year, he's got to knock out another first round pick, a really good target, and then they might have to spend a little bit of extra money in free agency if that's the case. Now, I'm not saying they have to revamp the whole defense if they get Russell Wilson, but mm. they have to at least try to get get some guys in for a good pass rush. We don't know yeah. if even Nelson's coming back at cornerback opposite of Darius Slay. And, mm -hmm. you know, linebacker is, you know, without TJ Edwards, you know, it's – there's really nothing there as a good backup for, you know, obviously Singleton. Davion Taylor is always hurt. If, if he could stay healthy, he may be a nice combination. Um, I feel like they extended TJ Edwards into another year because they're not drafting a quarter, uh, a linebacker. I feel like they extended him. I don't know. I feel like they had to extend him that one year, but maybe they're not going to get a linebacker. I mean, that would be my dream pick was to get a linebacker in the first round. Um, but well, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Dank says, I love you, Philly, but I don't agree with that. No, look, I understand people may not agree with it. And, and, and I'm not even, I'm not even sure I agree with it because I'm really wishy-washy with the whole thing. Um, but, but I just, <clears throat> I mean, I, I just think about like, like these teams and you see how they've turned around so quick. And, and if you give, if you give me a five, four or five year window, of being competitive, I might take a shot. But at the same time, if they don't and they and they want to go with Hurts another year, you know, I'm not going to complain about it at all because I think Hurts played a lot better last year or at the end of the year, and yeah. he deserves. He, you know, he he did what he could to get another shot. So if if the Eagles are willing to go trade for somebody, all right, we already get reports last week, right? Dan Silio, oh, uh, they're 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 talking to Houston about. Deshaun Watson again. If if that's the case, if the case is that the Eagles really aren't sure of Hurts, then they're going to go get a quarterback, and it's going to happen, regardless of what we think. You know, yeah, I, I mean, they're probably making the phone calls regardless. I mean, I think they're they probably made a phone call. I mean, at this case, so Mavericks. Is just, <laughs> why Philly? Why are you serious about taking a uh, about how he's going to pick a quarterback in the first? Yeah, well, that's yeah, yeah. You might be right about that. I mean, I really don't know what he's thinking, dude. I mean, I Carson, Carson Strong would be another quarterback that has a really good arm, too, and you could probably get him in the third round if that's the case. I Yeah, I mean, I watched the Senior Bowl today, and, and the only quarterback that made me, like, take a second look was Willis. I'm not saying – I mean, Pickett reminds me of Carson. He, he had a pretty good arm. I think he has tools. Um, you know, Strong, I, I don't know. Those guys, other guys were kind of quiet, but um, I'd have to study them more. But, but Willis – I, I mean, I just think from a athletic ability and tools, I think he has tremendous upside. He's just got it. You got to develop him. It's going to, you know, he, he's going to have to learn. He's coming from Liberty. So, you know, I, it may take a year or two. Right. But you think he's way ahead of Jalen Hurts when it comes to the simple things? What uh, so, like the Natural quarter. ability. I think right. he's faster. He's more, I think he's more elusive than he's faster. I think he's got a bigger arm. Okay. Now, the mental stuff, I think Jalen Hurts is very mentally strong. I think he's a natural leader. I think Jalen Hurts is a winner. I think Jalen Hurts under pressure in situations, I believe he can deliver. But just from a physical standpoint, the tools, no, nah, that kid got something. You know, he's just not that big, though. He's only like, he, he, he looks like Michael Vick to me, but right-handed. You know. Yeah, no, I get it. 
Um, so Nick says, if we're going to trade for a veteran quarterback, I'm trading for Derek Carr. Won't have to give up much. Derek Carr is not probably one of my top targets just because there's times where Derek Carr plays really well. And then there's times where Carr plays really bad, like horrible. I mean, I just think he's, I mean, he's better than obviously what we have right now in Hertz, but as of right now, I'm not really big into Derek. I've never really been a Derek Carr fan in general. And just, I, I, the only way that I would do it is it has to be a, a, a huge upgrade. Like you have to be going to like elite top five, 10 status, in my opinion, to quarterback. Otherwise I'm not doing it. So Russell Wilson, I would do it. If Deshaun Watson cleared all his off the field stuff and he was like, you know, cleared and he could play, I would do it. Aaron Rodgers, I wouldn't do it because he's 37 years old. How many years does he have possible left? He's already thinking of retirement in the next few. So I wouldn't I wouldn't do Aaron Rodgers, but the only two I would do it that I could think of would be Watson and Wilson. I would consider it. I'm not going to say I would do it, but I would consider it. Yeah. I don't know if even with the Deshaun Watson stuff going around, I don't even know if – I don't – I don't even know. My bad. The internet's been messed up. I don't know what's going on, but I have to check it out. Um, so the, the, <laughs> the whole Deshaun Watson situation, mm-hmm. the allegations and, and everything going on. The last thing I heard was he was trying to kind of do settlements with all these women and trying to you know pay everybody and just to mm-hmm. have all this go away. And it hasn't yeah. happened. So I no. I don't even know if he'll even play this year at this point. I mean, we don't even the Texans don't the mm-hmm. Texans don't even have a head coach yet, and we're still waiting on. What's going on with that? Brian Flores with what's going on with him. I don't I don't know if he's going there now. I mean, you're really between Josh McCown and Jonathan Gannon for the head coaching job. And still no news on that yet. Well, I hope it's Gannon <laughs> because I want him gone. I want him gone. Uh yeah, yeah. I mean, look, I, I don't know what, what Watson's situation is. I did hear the FBI was looking into it though. That was the last real big update I heard. And, and, and I was thinking about, like, why would the FBI be looking into it? They wouldn't be looking for crimes. The only thing I can think of is they may be looking at extortion. So if he's getting extorted mm. and it, it's cleared, that because, you know, the, 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 the circumstances around that whole thing, and I'm not saying he didn't, he, I, I'm not saying he did it or didn't, I don't know, I wasn't there. But he requested a trade, and, like, the next day, all this stuff started getting leaked out. Yeah. So the FBI is looking into it. We'll see. You know, I I, I don't know. I, I, I'm i not going to say one way or the other. But, you know, to me, if he settles, then it's like, uh, to me, that's almost of an admission of guilt. Because I would never settle with anybody unless I did something wrong. Yeah. Maverick says, screw the financial bond, Joe. I need a Super Bowl immediately. Now, we did. <laughs> now, here's the thing. So, we did do this in 2017. We went out, we signed a bunch of free agents. But the thing is, like, every free agent panned out, every free agent that we signed produced. Um, you know, so because you haven't drafted well since the Super Bowl, and, you know, that's why you've been restructuring contracts. And this team is, fi- you know, financially, this team is really, is, it looks really good right now. But that's, I, I've made, like, here's the thing that me and Philly 500 do agree on is, like, we're not going to applaud Howie Roseman for how this, how he's got three first-round picks, how the cap space is going to be 30 to $40 million in cap space right now. He got us in that situation of being over the cap for this long. You're not hitting your draft picks. You're restructuring every year. You're kicking the right. can down the road. You're putting more money to guarantee contracts with bigger cap hits later, which we, you know, paid the price for. So now it's up to him and the rest of this front office to really have a collaborative effort and try to, you know, they they have to it they have to do it in a collaborative way where they're picking, you know, obviously best player available, stop with the analytical crap that they're doing every single draft, best testing, best three cone, four cone, vertical jump. I don't care what it is. Obviously those things are important when it comes to the combine when you're drafting some of these guys, but it shouldn't be the main thing you look at your draft board you see who the best player is depend don't matter what really position it is you got to get the best guy there so i can almost i i'm willing to almost bet that the eagles will take a defensive end i am like almost so sure that they're going defensive end first round it's just a total eagles pick i think they're going to concentrate heavy on offense and defensive line in this draft 
more so than people realize. I think it's mm. going to be heavy line. Uh, I think they're going to. I think that's what they're going to attack. Now, with, with three first round picks, they may take a linebacker first time since 1979. That would be absolutely incredible. Um, but you know, I, I I think this is going to be a heavy line draft, offensive and defensive line. I really do. You know. Yeah, I mean, you think that they're going to at least go defensive line, maybe in free agency just a little bit, maybe one guy, and then really go deep into this draft to go get a top guy? Because I don't think they – will they stay at 15, 16? Will they try to move up? I uh, See, I, I my prediction is the Eagles are going to trade 15, 16 and move up. Hmm. That's what I think they're going to do. But, I mean, I, I'm, I don't know for sure. But I think that you're going to go – I think they're going to go defensive end in free agency – and I think they're going to go defensive end in the draft. I think they're going to draft. I think they're going to get two. I really do. They may now they may get a defensive end in the in the draft and then go defensive tackle. But I think you're going to see two pieces added on the defensive line. True. That is my prediction. True. No, I I agree. I think it starts with the trenches definitely. Or that we need a pass. We need a pass rush this year because I'm, I'm looking at. No, go ahead. No, I'm just, I'm just saying the secondary is not bad. I mean, Steve Nelson walks. I don't know who they're going to put back in there, but I, it's. I'll give you my my. I'll give you my three players. I think will end will end up on Eagles. Emmanuel Agba, the defensive end of Miami, two straight years of nine sacks. Right, he he's a decent player, pretty decent sized defensive end. I think you can get him for a decent price. 27, I think he's 27 years old. And then I think they're going to get uh, Jabril Peppers, the safety, because I'm already hearing rumors that the Eagles are interested in him. And it's almost like the same whispers with the Malcolm Jenkins thing when they right. got him. And then I think that my my outside shot is is uh, is is the wide receiver um, from Arizona, um, Christian Kirk. That, that Those are my three guys that, that I'm targeting. I think they're going to target yeah, no, I, I agree. Like if even even if you, you know, you go after a receiver like Christian Kirk would be totally fine with me. Put him in the slot, have you know Quez Watkins Devontae Smith on the outside if that's the case. Um, you know, Quez had six hundred and like six hundred and forty seven, yeah. forty nine yards. I mean, he had decent numbers for second year. He had a big improvement. I don't want to give up on him, you know. No, I don't. I don't either. That's why going into next year is going to be important. So if they add another receiver, okay, if they add another receiver, then it's really up to Jalen Hurts, and it's up to Shane Steichen to get these guys in the right positions to you know get open and be productive. Because now we're going to have to figure out if Jalen Hurts does play bad next year, who are we going to blame? We're going to blame more on Hurts, or we're going to blame Hurts and Shane Steichen because we could be possibly changing offensive coordinators next year. You know, it depends on the route combinations and and how they get these guys open. So. Well, you know, Hertz has got Hertz. Hertz has got to improve as a passer. I think people are going to be a lot more critical of him next year if he doesn't develop his passing. What worries me about Hertz is that he's just had ankle surgery, so now he's got to recover from that. So now he's already going to be behind the eight ball in being able to be a full go to to improve in that passing. You know what I mean? Right. Um. We have a super chat from Trans Fat. What's going on, man? He says uh, there was a genius involved in finding Mulata. Jeff, yeah, the scouting department, the scouting <laughs> yeah. department. Because right. if you if you watch the Eagles, seriously, this is so true. They they rely heavy yeah. on analytics early in the draft. Late in the draft, they go more to what their scouts suggest, and that's why you see late picks hit. I swear, I believe that wholeheartedly yeah i mean i mean so who would have known that you know jordan mulata would be the player that he is right now i mean we didn't know it was no. going to happen but you well, know what well, they, they didn't either because if they did they would have played him two years ago right. he was ready to play two years ago yeah um and then getting landon dickerson was a huge one i mean if he stays healthy yeah, well, we we knew he was going to be good if he could stay healthy. That I, mean, I remember draft day, we're like, well, he's good. He's good if he's healthy. Just can't stay healthy. So far, so good. Yeah. So Cameron says Akba, uh, Akba is twenty eight. Yeah. Okay. I knew he's twenty seven or twenty eight. I mean, that's perfect. You know, I I don't think you would overspend. He gets nine sacks a year. If he can increase his production by two two sacks, you got a double digit sack guy opposite of uh, uh, Brandon Graham. And then you bring in a young guy that that can work in a rotation, and you got a you got a scary defensive line all of a sudden. 
right. very scary defensive line. Yeah. Um, uh, we have 211 in the chat. Much love to everybody that joined the stream tonight. If you guys haven't uh, subscribed, subscribe to the channel. We cover the Eagles every single day. Like the stream if you guys haven't. Subscribe to the better half of the Philly Shakedown Podcast, Philly 500. His link is in the description below. We're going to have a lot of content for you guys this whole offseason. It's never going to stop. Uh, we've been thinking about uh, the live streaming uh, the combine and doing some other things. We're going to be live streaming all the, pretty much all three days of the draft um, and doing all that. So, and you know, I want to say one thing though. Yeah, I know people get sick of the quarterback talk. I'm sick of talking about it. But until until we see how this thing plays out, by all accounts, everything we've heard, the Eagles are still possibly interested in a receiver. So we all just don't really know what they're thinking. You know, I hope if, if, I, I have no problem if they want to go with Hurts. I'm good. I'm behind them. Let's get it done. Let's go get picks. I have no problem with it at all. But until, until they, you know, until we really know what they're really thinking, who knows? And when you hear the purports coming out yesterday, that Howie Roseman is just wherever Malik Willis is, that's where Howie Roseman is. And he is just all over him. It makes you wonder, you know? Yeah. And you know what? I'd look, I'm <clears throat> whatever they think is going to be good for this team. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Good for this team. I don't know if they'll draft a quarterback in the first, second round, but here's this. Like, I am totally fine with starting Jalen Hurts next year and using what <laughs> you have in your cap space and your draft. F picks to security of two first round picks for 23. And then if Jalen Hurts doesn't work out, then you have time to find another quarterback because there's about four or five prospects that are going to be really good coming out of that draft next year. So th there's time where they don't have to pull the trigger on a veteran quarterback or to draft one first, second round, waste a pick on a guy that you still have to develop because this draft is not good on quarterbacks. And then, you know, where you could have a starter on the field with those first and second round picks. So I understand both sides. I understand your side on the Russell Wilson thing. I understand, you know, both sides on keeping Jalen Hurts on the field. I think it's good either way. Um, I'm just not high on getting a veteran quarterback right now unless because I think really with our offense, I think we're like we're almost we're pretty much set. Like we just we just need development at quarterback. We need. Uh, another receiver as of right now. I think Quez Watkins could do a lot more. Somebody said there, I think he, I think the only catch that Quez really dropped that was wide open was that catchable ball. I forgot what game it was. The end of the Denver season, game. The first half. I'll never right. forget. Yeah. Denver game. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, you know, they, 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 they've got some, they've, they got, they got to fill some holes. I, I still think you need to beef up your interior offensive line. Okay, you lost Brooks, so I, I still think you need to get better on you know in turn in your you know interior line. I, I still think they need another wide receiver, and I still think you you know you may need to replace Jordan Howard. We don't know if he's even coming back, and when he has played, he always misses so much time. You know, I would not be surprised if the Eagles in the mid rounds take a, a like a bigger back. I really wouldn't. Oh, I think they I think they should. I mean, look, they got they got a steal with Kenneth Gainwell in the fifth round. I mean, that was a steal. I mean, you know, I think he's a I think he's a, a dual threat back. You can line him up anywhere you want. Is he the fastest guy? No, but you know, the guy the guy can get get you yards, and that's all that matters. But I would love to draft like a you know, like a Najee Harris in the late rounds. I mean, not exactly like Najee Harris, but somebody that's you know elusive, you know, you know, big back, bruiser back, elusive, just a little bit, just something I like would I was watching this kid in the senior bowl today. I, I can't remember. I think it was Pierce. This kid from Florida. He's 5'9", 220 pounds. Mm. He looked like uh Daryl Henderson from the Rams. That's what he looked like. He was low, but he was he was powerful and he was quick, man. Um, so the my point is that you you, you know, the Eagles aren't gonna go out and sign a, a big name running back. They're going to draft a running back that you can find a running back in the draft, you know. They definitely can. Yeah. Uh, Chris Cooper, appreciate it, man. What's going on, dude? He said, hey, Philly 500, Joey Shakes. How y'all doing today? God bless y'all fly. Eagles fly. God bless you too, Chris Cooper. We are good. How are you? Um, the Ask for Apologist says, build the defense. Jimmy Garopp <laughs> Garoppagos got the playoffs because of that awesome defense San Fran has. So so here's a debate, and, 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 and me and Brunson were talking about this the other day. Do you build your team? Do you want to build it like where – you're good all around with, let's say, a average to decent quarterback, or do, you, or do you want to build it with an elite quarterback? Like, how would you go about building? Because you could build it both ways, but the 
Jimmy Garoppolo had a great defense, but he's, he lost. He's out. Um, he wasn't good enough when, when it counted. And um, to me, I, I think that it's very hard. I think in some ways it's harder to build a team around an average quarterback or slightly above average quarterback because you have to fill every hole. Okay, you're gonna have to be good all around. If you look at the Niners, they got they're good on defense. They got a good pass rusher. They got a good linebackers. Their secondary is not so good. Look at their receivers, Debo, Ayuk. They got a good, good core. Now, you have to hit on draft picks. I think it's always easier to build around an elite quarterback if you can get them because they can hide deficiencies. So if I had to choose how I would build a team, I would build it around an elite quarterback because it gives me more flexibility in building my roster yeah i get it and that's plus, just my opinion and when you talk about garoppolo and that defense i mean i mean oh my god like the dc you know defensive coordinator i mean he takes shots i mean he's not right. afraid to take shots you know what i mean no. so that's no he that's brings thing. it yeah yeah right. um you know but garoppolo scared the crap out of me because he's throwing like these sideline passes like they're fades and like he could have got picked off like four or five times in that game. And then he's getting tackled and he's still trying to throw the ball kind of like how Carson Wentz would do where he's getting tackled and he tries to make some play happen. You know, I didn't like that at all from him. He made some really bad decisions. Obviously the defense rose up to the occasion and really uh, kept him in some of these games. So, yeah. I mean that green Bay game, they won because of special teams. That's it. Special te yeah. You know, um, but, but when the game was on the line and the last two possessions of that game versus the Rams, after beating the Rams twice this, that year, uh, that defensive line for the Rams took over and Garoppolo couldn't do anything. An elite quarterback makes a play there, and, and that's the difference, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, Tom says, I'd love to go and get a high-quality Robert here to take pressure off Smith, rookie carrying the team offensively. Yeah. Yeah. I think they will. I think – I mean, I don't know if they'll be – I don't, you know, I don't know. If it's going to be a top of the line guy, but I do think that they're going to get a, another wide receiver. I do. Yeah. Well, what would be your favorite? I mean, like a realistic target. What would be like a realistic target you see the Eagles Eagles doing? Trade. I, I, I really running? believe Christian Kirk is one. I, I I believe Christian Kirk is one. I think DJ Chark is one. Um, I think Mike Williams is one. I, I I think some of those guys, and and then and then I would say, you know. Don't discount Calvin Ridley if, if something becomes available. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Cameron Holmes says, Joey, she goes, how he signs a free agent receiver is how he admitting Rager is a bust. I I hope so. <laughs> because he, he better, if he doesn't, if he doesn't, if he can't accept it, like if he can't come to grips and admit it at this point, we are in trouble. We are in trouble because... Because he he pushed they pushed Rager so much that I thought they took away from uh, Devontae Smith. They took attention away, and they and instead of focusing on Devontae Smith and others, they focused more on Rager. Uh, Rager had seemed like more opportunities than Smith and Quez Watkins, dude, and and he shouldn't have. Yeah, no, I mean that's I mean I think the Eagles have given Rager every opportunity to start. Um, he started every single game. I mean, they've given him more than an opportunity to show like his skill set to see what they could, he could bring to the table. And he's been given opportunity, opportunity, opportunity every single game and hasn't done anything. Like I'm pretty much done with him. I mean, whatever happens to him is whatever happens to him. So I don't, I don't know what's going on, but yeah, the JJR take a white side, uh, you know, all gotta this, go. they, they got to get this. It's done. Like they, they got to move on. Like the, it's over. Like, stop well, trying to justify well, these picks. Well, we're getting reports, right? That that um that Rager may want a change of scenery. So he, he's already tapping out, dude. You know. So so let's just do if it's just, if just it's true. Him. I mean, if it's true. Yeah. I mean, he may want to. I mean, he may because because honestly, when when you're in Philadelphia and you have this mental block that a lot some players just come here and they you know when he knows he plays like crap and he. He goes on social media and blocks all of his accounts. Like he knows he's going to get it from the fans. And right. you know, I just think it's just weak that he does that. It's just very weak. It's it's weak minded, yeah. and uh, we can't do that, man. Like we, he knows yeah. he's got to play better. At the end of the day, it's just not yeah. good. Yeah, D Train says something interesting, and I, I I agree with him. And I've been saying this for a long time. People get mad at me, but he said I just rewatched the Eagles Super Bowl. He says mm. funny. Everybody talks about building defense to win a championship. But there was no defense to be found on either side of that game. I agree. I don't think I don't think defenses win championships the way they used to. I think offenses do. 
But what you need on defense is you need to get pressure on the quarterback. Mm -hmm. That that is a key. But I, I I agree. I kind of agree with that. I don't think the new NFL is is as defense driven as it used to be. You had Jalen Mills and Ronald Darby as your starting cornerbacks. Yeah, Brady threw over 500 yards in that game. Right. Yeah. You know, and then you look at the year before, you look at the Atlanta-Tampa game. There was no defense in that game. You know, it just – it's not the same like it used to be. Right. Um. So, yeah, because at this point, I think, like, you don't need to put too much into your defense. I think you just need to do enough to where your defense is average to where it could be productive. But it's it's a – you know, it's a, it's a, it's a passing league, and – you need a quarterback, yeah. and you need receivers that are going to go and make plays. So, yeah. Um, you run- need, what, well, I was going to say you need an opportunistic defense, a defense that's opportunistic. That's what you need today, and and you get that with pressure on the quarterback. I truly True. believe that. True. Um, we got Tyrell Young with the super chat. Appreciate it very much. He says, "Can't wait for the Eagles to draft three quarterbacks." <laughs> oh my gosh! Could you imagine? I have no idea how he's thinking. Like it's going to be so. Fascinating. It's going to be such an interesting offseason for the Eagles. This is like the most exciting offseason, I think, since the Eagles got Terrell Owens. And we haven't even gotten to that point yet. But yeah. I think it's going to be that kind of exciting. It's exciting, but also terrifying at the same time because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. Because uh, you have, you're dealing with Howie Roseman. This team is quiet. Usually in these offseasons, he's very, very quiet. And like they were, they were quiet last offseason. They were really quiet last offseason. Except for like you know the, the getting rid of cars and stuff, but in terms of acquiring guys, they were quiet. I I think they're going to be pretty busy this year. I think you're going to see. I think you're going to see like. I think you're going to see like two or three free agent signings that are kind of mid level signings, you know, mid to high, but not top of the line. And then I think you're going to see them really aggressive in the draft, really aggressive. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Uh, Cyclone fifty eight says we were a good QB away from beating the Bucks. What was the yeah, main? The, what was the main thing in that game that really pissed? You? What was the main thing that we were missing? And especially seeing some of the video behind the scenes of you know the uh, the Bucks defense saying that Jalen Hurts can't read defenses. Is that really bad that teams are knowing this now? Well, if they didn't know by now, they're they you know they're all going to look at that tape. You know, it's a copycat league. So so usually defenses adjust and then they'll do what somebody else did. And if it continues to work, you're going to see it more and more. He's got to develop in a pass. He's got to develop into a better passer. That I mean, that's the thing. The, the, they didn't run the ball as much as I thought they should, right? I thought they should have tried to run the ball more. But, at, you know, in this league, at some point, he's, you got to make throws. So, you know, to me, I don't look at it like, oh, he's trash and he's horrible and, and that's it. I just look at this as like, this is, J- this is Jalen Hurts' starting point where he needs to develop to. And and the question is now, can he develop, uh, uh, you know, into a better passer? And here's the other thing. You have to develop into a better passer in today's football because you can't keep running that much without getting hurt. He's going to, you know, any quarterback, I don't care who it is, uh, you're going to get hurt. Randall Cunningham, as he got older in his career, he ran less. McNabb started running a lot, ran less. Vic ran less. Steve Young ran less. You have to develop your passing game, um, you know, because he's already got an ankle and he already had an ankle surgery. So, you know, that's the key. The key is it's got to develop into a better passer. Yeah. And anticipation on throws. You miss Quez Watkins three times for a potential touchdown. Right. If, those, if those balls are thrown accurately, it's definitely a different story in that game. I mean, we just, I mean, the game was over in 10 minutes. I mean, after after Rager muffed the punt on like the 50 yard line, that was pretty much it. I mean, it oh, well, Rager, Regular. Yeah. <laughs> but I, and I didn't like the way the coach, I didn't like the way the defense came out. We talked about that game. Uh, you can't yeah. come out and play defense that day. It took them a whole half to adjust. And then they adjusted and, and they, they 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 held the line, but it took them a half. It can only get you so far doing that every game against bad teams. Right. You can adjust and get back into these games, but when you face a team where they can score on every single drive, it's right. a problem. It's one of the most passive defenses I've ever seen. They've given way too many quarterbacks respect, and on top of everything else, you've let four to six to eight quarterbacks over eighty percent completion percentage this year. Even quarterbacks that are horrible. And he's getting job interviews. That is insane to me. 
Like, why? Why would I hire him? Yeah. If I was Houston, I would have hired Flores like that. He would have been the guy. I mean, it was a perfect scenario. And 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 why would you want Jonathan Gannon? I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, even with the Eagles schedule this year, you're going to be facing Doug Peterson as the new head coach for the Jaguars. And good for him. I was happy for him um, to get that job. He deserves it. I hope he turns that franchise around. You're you're going to be you're going to be facing. I don't know. You're going to be facing Carson Wentz and Indy this year. You're going to be facing Zach Ertz uh, with the with the uh, Cardinals this year. So, I mean, it's uh, there has been some rumors. We've been hearing the Giants have been making a lot of moves. Brian, the ball signing, obviously. Um, and now uh, there is the, they're actually interviewing Jim Schwartz for the D.C. job, which I saw. Today. I, uh, well, I know uh, how to beat him. I can tell you how to beat him. <laughs> I know exactly what to do. Just put yourself in third and 15. And then run a quick wide receiver screen. They'll be 30 yards back. Easy first down. <laughs> oh, my God. We well, I, a... You know. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. No, I was just going to say the Giants, they're, they're clearly you can see what they're doing. They bring in the ball. They bring in Kafka. They bring in yeah. one of our guys as assistant GM. They are going. I, if I'm the Giants, they got two first-round picks. I, I would be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked if both of those picks are offensive linemen. Both of them, but because their whole thing is to try to save Daniel Jones. I heard. I've, uh, I heard they've been looking at quarterbacks too this year. Even though they said that they're building around Daniel Jones, they still think that they could turn him into a Josh Allen. Whatever they think, they, they no think they could turn him into. He can't. He ain't no Josh Allen. Um, we got a super chat from Radiation Boss. What's going on, man? He says, "What? Uh, what you need are studs in the trenches and the opportunistic defense. We won with a three-headed run attack and D line." That created my bad. Something, something, something's up with the internet today. I don't know what's going on. Um, just imagine what this, what, what this secondary, how well this secondary would have played this year if we had pressure. Because our secondary, right. you know, you can't really pick on the secondary too much if you got no pass rush every single play of the game. I mean, mostly, uh, I mean, you know, against yeah. prominent teams. I mean, yeah. it's, it's tough, man. It's really tough yeah. to really blame the secondary too much. I, I, I agree totally with radiation bots. You, you need your trenches, man. That's that's the whole key in, in today's football. Is you got to build from the inside out, you know, and, and you have to you have to have a good line and, and you have to have a good uh, on the defense side ball. You have to be able to get to the quarterback. That's the only like that's the only you know way to neutralize the offense, the rules that are are going in the offenses. Um, you know, favor. Uh, you got to get pressure. Have to. Yeah, Kafka. Kafka is a giant offensive coordinator. They just hired him. Right. Right. Um, even Eric Bieniemy from from Kansas City. Uh, apparently, he's been called for the Saints to be the head coach for an interview. So, I mean, he's another name that's been kind of going around as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he he he. Look, he was on. He was one of the guys I wanted. As a, as a head coach last year, him, the ball, they, those were like my two two of my like top notch guys I wanted, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a super chat from Phil every hole five hundred. Um, <laughs> you know it. <laughs> you know. Um, two thousand twenty two draft. Let's fill these holes, Philly. Let's fill these holes, baby. You know it. <laughs> Way ahead of your partner. <clears throat> All right, so Dalvin Richards says, you guys give Gann too much heat. Teams didn't score on us or beat us deep. We want aggressiveness, but aggressiveness got Tampa sent home. If Bulls did that as Philly, D.C., we would have his head. But I don't no. think no. I don't think that at all. No. I, listen, I, I, I'm just telling you the truth of Gannon. You can't have – you can't the, – the style and scheme – is horrible. It's too passive, and it doesn't work. We we when we played good quarterbacks, they destroyed us. You're talking eighty percent completion percentage. The only way that they turned it around was when Gannon did what he didn't want to do and was forced to bring pressure. Uh, we had we had I think four or five games where we didn't even get a team to punt the ball. The entire game, not one game, like four of them. I I think I, I have to respectfully 
disagree with you. I I think I think you have to have an aggressive defense. Yeah. Um. And and you you know it has to be it has to be done right. It has to be smart. And, and, and you have to pick your 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 spots. But if you look in today's NFL, if you don't get to the quarterback, you're not going to win very many games. And every time we seem to play a good quarterback. They they were having over eighty percent completion percentages, you know. Um, when you play the Giants twice, and they had they had the, the you know <clears throat> long neck on, and then they had you know Heineken, and you have these these quarterbacks that really aren't that good. Yeah, you can get away with it. But every time we played good guys, you look 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 what um look what uh Carr did against us. Look what Herbert did against us. Look what Brady did against us twice. Look what Holmes did against us. Like you got to be able to stop those guys. We couldn't. They were. I mean, we're talking eighty percent completion percentage. And I think we were like what almost last in sacks last year. There, there's a correlation there, is what I'm saying. Yeah, there's I, I, I respectfully disagree. Yeah, there's games that we have. There's games where we didn't even touch the quarterback one time. I mean, that's bad. I mean, this we've always been known that we're we've always had good defensive lines every single year. Like we've always put pressure on quarterbacks every year. But this year with the new DC and Jonathan Gannon has been very passive. And yeah, we haven't given up the big play, but. But you're getting up if you're facing a, a good team with good receivers. I don't care if you're playing it safe and you're playing prevent or playing soft zone coverage. You're giving these guys all these yards plus more yak on top of it. I mean, you're just it, it's it's the same as giving up a big play. I mean, we've we've we went back and we're giving these guys these underthrows and they're getting a lot of yards on us. A first down every single play. I mean, it's just yeah. he's got to pick his poison. He has to he has to be more aggressive. He's just not that type of coach. And and the and the reason he has to be more aggressive is because he doesn't have the front seven that he needs. They're not good enough. So you have to bring the extra heat because that front four isn't getting to the quarterback. So that's that's why I say, especially that's why I say you need two defensive ends. If Gannon remains a defensive coordinator, he's not going to want to blitz. He's going to want to play the way he plays. So the only way to really make that work for you is to have a premier defensive line that gets to the quarterback constantly. You know, yeah, like how many times, how many times have we done a vanilla blitz and they've picked right. it up and like it didn't, you know what I mean? Like that's why it's just it, it's it's really aggravating. Let's go. <laughs> Cryptologist, he says 500 is called Costanza strategy. Yeah, exactly. What whatever you want to do, just do the opposite. Gannon, yeah, every time Gannon did exactly what he didn't want to do, which is blitz and be aggressive, usually in the second half. It started to work. It started to work, you know. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, yeah. I, I, I'm old school though. You know, I come from the Buddy Ryan days and the Jim Johnson days. I, 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 I believe that you have to be aggressive and dictate to the offense, not allow the offense to dictate to you. Um, so it, it's just, it's just the way I, I, I see a defense. I guess you know. Yeah, it's the total opposite of what's happening when we, we've always had good pass rushes. And obviously, like, we didn't really have good corners. I thought Steven Nelson wasn't great. He wasn't bad, but he was solid. And mm -hmm. obviously, big play Slay had one of the – probably the best year of his career right. at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Avante yeah. Maddox gets paid, which we didn't think that was going to happen. He gets paid. So we were happy with it. But this defensive line, I mean, I don't know if it's – like – why is Fletcher Cox not getting as much pressure as he used to? Is he as he been descending the past couple, you know, two three years? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Josh Wett gets a new contract when he was before he got the new contract. The past couple, you know, few seasons he was getting better and better every season. The more reps he was getting, the more he was getting in the backfield, disrupting the backfield. Not necessarily getting sacks, you know, but you know, just being disruptive in general. No. And Javon, yeah, Harvey it doesn't double team. And it doesn't always have to be about sacks. It's no. about it's about disrupting. And Mad Hatter, he says it perfectly. If you see his comment, um, he says, uh, "Do you see him?" Uh, but but he's he's absolutely right. If if you do not disrupt the quarterback, you will give up eighty percent passing percentage against good quarterbacks. That's 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 exactly right. That's exactly right. So that that is why when people are like, "Why do you want two defensive ends?" That that is why. That is exactly why. Yeah, you know. We got a super chat from Aiden Martinez it says uh, when Javon Hargrave got right. the QB, we were good. Yeah, I mean that's that's the so after the fifth sixth week, teams started to figure out. Well, Javon is more yeah, obviously he's he's, he's the get, one that they started the doubling him. Right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and and Josh Sweat, you know, I have no problem with what Josh Sweat had seven sacks. I thought he came on late uh, in, in the year. 
I saw a thing where it was an interview, and I said this before <clears throat> with um with uh, what's his face, uh, Joe Banner, and Joe Banner was saying that. The contract that he signed was a contract for a defensive end who gets between seven and nine sacks a year. So they're getting their money worth out of that contract. However, I think with Derek Barnett leaving and then the age and health of Brandon Graham, I would bring in another guy too. So if in a year or two Brandon Graham is not there, you already got a guy ready to go. You know? Yeah, I, I agree with all that. What you just said, I agree with all that, and especially having you know Teron Jackson's a rotational player. He's going to his mm-hmm. second year to see what he could do. So nothing crazy. I think he'll be maybe a good rotational player. We'll see what happens. Milt Williams is definitely a guy I'm, I'm like kind of excited to see going to his second year on the rotation. Yeah. Third round pick from Louisiana Tech, and you know this was an analytical pick that Gannon was really happy about. Okay, that right. you know the, the analytical department. This was an analytical pick. So um, Milt, I Williams like him even, too. Yeah, definitely. Even seeing him in that finale where we have to see him for the whole entire game and no rotation. He was in there pretty much the whole game for the finale versus the Cowboys. And man, he was getting pressure. Uh, he was getting a lot of pressure in that game. So I'm, I'm hoping to see something, a, a bigger role out of him in the rotation yeah. next year. And we'll, you know, we'll yeah. see what happens with that. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, we have Super Chef Tyrell Young. Appreciate it, man. He says, we need to rebuild the trenches and new safeties. That's what we need really for Gans D to work. We got to hold our QB accountable and stop babying him. Um, no, definitely. We got uh, yeah, with Howie Roseman. Definitely. I think I, I think I think this year uh you know, I think you know, I think I think that, you know, people are going to be more critical of Hurts because now he's got to develop his passing game. So I think I think you'll see that accountability. As far as Gannon's uh yeah, the trenches have to be rebuilt and I agree. We need a we need a safety uh, we need a we uh, to me we need a guy who you know, we need a quarterback of the defense, you know. Right. We don't have that. We we need a safety. Um you know, that Kyle, the Kyle Hamilton, I don't know where they're expecting him to go, maybe 5 to 10. But if that kid falls to, like, 10, 11, I would go get him. I would go get him because he could quarterback your your your, your secondary for a long time. Um, you know, I don't know if they're going to – you know, there's rumors about them, Jabril Peppers. Um, you know, so, I mean, we'll see. But I, I agree. They, they definitely need a safety. The way, the way Kyle Hamilton can move at 6 – Six four, two hundred twenty right. pounds is just I know. holy crap, man. This guy is just he's and he's a ball hawk. He's always around the football. He's got a real good football IQ. I mean, he's always yeah. around the ball everywhere. Um, yeah. and he's just he's just so good, man. Like if he might be a top ten pick, or he might, you know, it just depends the needs of these teams in the top ten. He could be there. I mean, who knows? But we we just don't. You know, things are going to change. You 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 got the Senior Bowl, then you had the Scouting Combine. Then you're gonna have pro day. You we're gonna see the boards the way they're falling in the mock drafts you're watching. They're gonna dramatically change. They're they're going to dramatically change. So we kind of just have to wait. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, Common star with the super chat. Appreciate it very much, man. He says you need a DC that's balanced and has many disguises like Belichick's defense. Yeah. You don't want a DC that's too aggressive or conservative. Well, that's the promise we got from Gannon. We we got a a defensive coordinator that promised us that he was going to disguise coverages and do multiple fronts four three three four. You know, kind of mix things up. But I don't I, for for the soft co- like the zone coverage I can't stand because we're allowing receivers to get off the line without being, getting touched, and we don't have the personnel to to do a defense like that. And I and half the time. The communication, it seems to like they don't like they just let these guys off the line. They're just getting chunk yards. I mean, it's just yeah. what are they doing? It, I don't care how balanced you are. I don't care what scheme you're running. I don't care what disguises. If you don't get pressure on the quarterback, you're going to get destroyed by good quarterbacks. Uh, it, that's just the nature of today's NFL. All the rules are in favor of the offense. All the rules go for the offense and help the offense. The only way you neutralize that is you got to cut the you got to you got to cut the snake off at the head. You got to get to the quarterback. So all those things are right and true, but you got to get to the court. Now listen, if Gannon had Reggie White, Jerome Brown, and Clyde Simmons on the defensive line, he probably looked like a defensive genius because they would get pressure all the time with that front four. But when you don't, and then you have quarterbacks thrown over eighty percent like every other week. That's a problem, you know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We got a super chat from Red Eagle. Appreciate it, man. He says uh, cornerback is a must. Hopefully, uh, Kilar Elam and uh, Ajabo or Jermaine Johnson will be there. Ooh, 15, 16. Yeah, Jabo's nice. Yeah, and get a line. I first for next yeah, I just did like four Philly reacts. I got to edit them. I did Jermaine Johnson and I did uh, David Ajabo, and. 
Aiden Hutchinson looks reminds me of Bosa. David Ajabu reminds me of a young JPP, young Jason Pierre Paul. I I think I think he's going to be good too. I, I, I to me right now, if I had to say, all right, Aiden Hutchinson and the Thibodeau, they're, they're off the board. I would go I would go Ajabu at, at, at fifteen. I would and me personally. I would go Jabu, and then I would go Devin Lloyd, or was yeah Lloyd, and then and that would be my first two picks. Then I'd come back. Or I'd probably trade out of the first at that point, but I, I would do something like that. Jermaine Johnson's from Florida State, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I'm looking he's at the right good. I like him. I like him. Yeah, but I I, I like a Jabu a lot. Yeah. So really, edge rushers very deep in this draft. I mean, they they have to get one of these guys. They they really have to. Like, I don't yeah. want them to do what they did in 2019 when it was a heavy defensive draft and they went offensive lineman. I mean, I mean, they could do that because there's one guy that could be on the board at 15, 16. It could be Tyler Linderbaum. Which I don't care if Kelsey's retired or not. But would you be, would you just would you like be fine with it regardless if they yes. draft Tyler Linderbaum? Yeah. Oh, I love Tyler. Linderbaum. He's one of my top once. However. If the Giants let him get past them, they are truly dumber than I ever thought. Okay, because to me, he should be. A, if I'm the Giants, I'm jumping all over him. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> um, let's see here. 21st Century Native says uh, you need players on defense to make the scheme work. Belichick had uh, Seymour, Wilfork, Harrison, Tila. Yeah, no. Seymour. And one thing about those those guys, I mean, Will Fork, they, see, they got pressure constantly. Oh, yeah. They got push up the middle. It, it, you have to get pressure. You, and, and, and you have to be able, when you can't get pressure, you have to be able to scheme pressure. And that's what good coaches do. Uh, you know, the guys that you're bringing up, uh, Will Fork, I mean, they got pressure. You know what I mean? And and then, you know, Harrison and Ty Law were good already. But then you're getting pressure, and you know it makes them even better. I'm yeah. telling you, the key to defense is pressure, pressure, pressure on the quarterback. Stop yeah. the run and get pressure. Now, are, is this team going to get into a more aggressive mode next year if Jonathan Gannon is still the DC? That's going to be another question. If well, if he's... I, I'm assuming they're not. So that's why I'm like, we got to get better on the defensive line, dramatically better. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I agree. Um, Paul Mancini says, who I want to sign, uh, how we to sign free agency. That's uh, all I Devontae uh, Campbell of the Packers, safety Quandre Diggs of Seattle, defensive end Opa from the uh, Dolphins, yeah, and Cedric Wilson. Cedric Wilson of the Cowboys and wide receiver DJ uh, Char. I don't want any Cowboys. Just, I don't either. I'm so scared of getting Cowboys, but I do like Wilson, though. I, th I think he's good. Um, and I like DJ Shark, and 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 then you know Oba, uh, Emmanuel Oba is my is my number one. That's my number one target. Mm. I agree. I agree. So uh, let's see here. Got over two hundred fifty of the chat. Much love to everybody uh, that's in here tonight. Um, yes, we we are on the fifty third episode of the Philly Shakedown. Uh, we'll be doing this every week. Um, you know, alternating channels once a week. Um, and then once things start heating up, maybe we'll add some, uh, maybe another stream during the week or whatnot when things get a little bit more busy. Um, but definitely 257. Much love to everybody. If you guys haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. We cover the Eagles every single day. If you guys haven't liked the stream, like the stream. It does help to help out the channel out a lot. If you guys haven't subscribed to Philly 500, his link is in the description below. A lot of we have a lot of content coming out this off season. This is the bread and butter of what we do. So uh, definitely uh, check in and uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be around. So I mean, we went over yeah. an hour. I, I didn't realize you know, we could talk about this for hours. <laughs> and when it comes to the off season right. speculation, everything like that. Um, it definitely gets crazy. So, uh, we have super chat from Chris M. He says Desmond Ritter would be perfect for us. Has a strong arm. Reese defense is mobile. Took a low program to uh, to the Peach B, uh, and gave Georgia a tough time. I haven't looked at I, Desmond Ritter. I I watched. This, I mean, I saw a little bit today, senior ball. I'm not going to make a judgment on him. Um, from what I saw, because it wasn't really that good, but. That, that those defensive the both both lines in today's game were really good. I mean, they had pressured the quarterback all day. But I'll have to I'll have to go check them out. Um, let's see here. Dalvin Rich says we don't need to be more aggressive. Defensive line needs to be better. Fletch, Hargrave, Sweat, and all are getting paid to get to QB. That's their job. San Francisco doesn't blitz. Rams didn't blitz. Brady both got home and with four. But 
but they get but they get pressure with the front four. Right. So when I say aggressive, what I mean by that is this. Here, here let me explain what I mean. If you, you got to get pressure on the quarterback, you have to dictate to the offense what you're going to do. That's aggressive. When you sit back in zone and you just let the quarterback go back and throw and you just rush for and you're not getting pressure, to me, you have to be more aggressive, meaning that at that point you have to make adjustments. You have to take chances. You have to start blitzing. You have to dictate to the offense. That, to me, is aggressiveness. What the Eagles do is not aggressive. They sit back, and they let guys throw for over 80% on them. I, you know, There's no way you should be going a half, and a quarterback has not been knocked on the ground yet. He's 23 of 20, you know, 23 of 25 in the first half. You can't have games like that. So uh, to say why, I don't know. When I think defense, I think of aggressiveness, uh, dic dictating to the offense. Why you would want to be passive on defense is beyond me. If you're getting pressure with your front four, you are dictating to the offense. That is aggressive. But when you're not, you have to scheme it open. Yeah, and I feel like the, the Gannon is just running his defense. I feel like there's no scheme because why is every game we have to wait until a whole – we have to wait after the first half to get some type of production to why these guys are – why these coaches are waiting offensively and defensively. It's not just one side. It's both sides. Right. I don't know what right. – it's like let's just do it this way. Let's just run our basic crap until – we have to make adjustments and then they start, you know, the teams that start doing damage to us during these games. And like, I don't know why it's taking this long to where like, I'm just running my defense and that's it. You know I mean? He's just running his defense. There's no scheme towards it. It's like with right. matchups and stuff like that. I just feel like they're just running it and it just, whatever happens happens at the end of the day. So think about this, for example, right? The, the, not only did the better, better quarterbacks throw for like over 80% against us, but you had quarterbacks like Heineken, um, uh, Zach Wilson, guys who were legitimately young and struggling in this league during the year, the guys that you could get turnovers and do things for, have big games against us, especially big first halves against us. Jim Johnson never allowed young quarterbacks. They always struggled against the Eagles. They always couldn't do anything. Um in Jonathan Gannon's defense, the young quarterbacks had big games, guys that hadn't played good all year. Zach Wilson had a good year. He came out. He looked like Joe Montana versus us. So to me, that that's, that's just a different philosophy. I don't understand his philosophy on defense. I, I don't like the bend-o-break philosophy. I like the I'm going to dictate to you what we're going to do, and that's it. And, and that's how I see it, you know? No, yeah, I you no, know, I get it. I get it. And hopefully they they make changes. I they have to add to the defensive line. They have to get it. I mean, I think at the I think they'll go sign a safety and free agents. You got like you said, you had Jabril Peppers. You have Marcus Williams from Seattle, uh, from uh, New Orleans is there as well. So there's there are guys that you know. I think they have to pay one of these guys. I think they have no choice because you're so right. empty. Because don't don't go with the old Howie Roseman and bring back players that played here or are just washed players. You know, I'm not saying you know Rodney McLeod. You know. Oh, he made some good plays this year here and there. I mean, there just wasn't much production in the back end of our of our defense. And, you know, I mean, there's more problems in the back end of our defense because the front lines of our defense can't do anything as it is. So uh, right. I think they have to sign one of these one of these safeties. And I'll be happy with the Marcus Williams. I'll be happy with uh, – I mean, I I like uh, I like Jabril Peppers. As, uh, uh, well, I actually like Jabril Peppers more because I think he's got leadership quality. And, um, you know, I, I think he's a really good player. That was a, a good trade that the Giants had with, with, the, uh, with Cleveland. Uh, to get him so um and i didn't yeah. really know that he was a free agent until i think last week or a week and a half yeah. ago when you said yeah. uh, he was so now i know i i mean i know i talk a lot about defensive end i do because i just think it's so important but there are other needs in uh, you know on this defense I, I think i think after i go defensive end i gotta address the safety okay I got to address safety. I need a safety that could be quarterback of 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 my defense. I would like a future safety. Um, you know, you have Anthony Harris is probably going to go right. Rodney McLeod is older. You you need another safety. So you need a safety. You also need another corner. I would try to bring Stephen Nelson back. I I thought he was okay enough. If you can bring him on the cheap, bring him back for a year. Maybe draft a, a corner in the draft. 
to go behind him for one year and learn. Um, and then and then you need linebackers. And and the only reason I don't rate linebackers higher is because I know the Eagles do not value them. They, you know, are they going to really? Can we really expect them to draft Dean or Lloyd? I mean, I would love it. I would love it, but they don't. But but you need you need you need defensive ends. You need you need safety. You need a linebacker. You need a corner. That's what you yeah. need. Yeah, I mean, look, if they bring Stephen Nelson back, good. But here's another thing. So then, after if that move is made and they resign Stephen Nelson. Then Steven Nelson leaves after 2022. Then Slay's leaving after 2022. Then you're down to no corners. You have Tay Gowan. You have Zach McPherson. You have uh, Vincent Carter Jr., whatever, or Carter something Jr., whatever his name is. So, I mean, you're down to some depth. I mean, I kind of want to see the depth a little bit, see McPherson. Tay Gowan's another one I kind of want to see from the Zach Ertz trade. Um, and I like and, – and, and there's Epps, too. I like Epps as a safety. I, oh, yeah. but I don't know that – I don't know that I consider him a starting uh, – no safety who's going to be the quarterback of my defense or my secondary i i want i want i want that derwin james kind of safety you know i i really like this hamilton kid man if if we could somehow get him that that would be awesome you know yeah no i'm like i said guys it's gonna be it's gonna be a really exciting off season we have a, a lot we're not yeah. even through we're not even through the thick of what's happening now we're not even to free agency yet uh, more rumors are going to come out. Obviously, the Eagles have a lot of picks, so a lot of a lot of times, you know, when a team has a lot of picks, they're going to go towards the Eagles going to get certain players at high price or whatever happens. But um, yeah, it, it's going to be fun. I mean, I mean, who knows? You know, I, I assume they're going to keep Hurts. I'm assuming they're going to do that, but I do think they're going to be aggressive with those first round picks. I, I would really be shocked if we came out of this draft with three first round picks. I, I would be shocked. I wouldn't be totally dis I wouldn't be disappointed, but I would be shocked. And look, and even if say they don't trade for a quarterback and they and they trade for like a receiver, or they trade like if they go for obviously a DK Metcalf or they or they trade for a prime marquee a marquee name player with a first round pick, I'd be fine with it. You know, I'm I'm totally fine with Howie being aggressive in that way too to add a playmaker that's still in a rookie contract or a guy that's about to get paid after a year, and you know, you bring a guy here that's going to make a difference, and and you give up a first rounder. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm I'm totally good with that too. Well, here's a hypothetical. I got a hypothetical question for people. All right, this is hypothetical. This isn't reality. But let's say the Eagles are negotiating for Russell Wilson, right? And let's say it comes down to the Eagles and Washington. Would you trade to make sure Washington doesn't get him? You could, all right. So you you cut out a little bit. Is it for Russell Wilson? Russell Wilson. Let's just say hypothetically, Russell Wilson. Okay. Is is going to get traded, and it's down to the Eagles and Washington. Would you give a little more to prevent him from going to Washington? What's a little more? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, that, that's the that's gonna be the big know. difference. Well, say it. Come on, you, what do you think? What's what? Well, just just make up something. Just uh, an extra extra second round pick. We'll say you have to throw that extra second to get it done. Do you do it? I mean, I don't want Russell Wilson in our division playing against us. No, I think I think he'll do well in Washington. To be honest, I, I, I think, think they could win the Super Bowl. To be honest with you, mm -hmm. I could see it. The Commanders. Guys, oh my God, what a horrible! Just the, the team with that name should never win anything ever again. <laughs> True that. True that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just throwing a hypothetical. I don't think it's going to happen, but no. Well, they, well, Alva Breer did from NFL did say that the you know Washington is going after a quarterback. So I'm, I'm yeah. actually trying to see like what's going to happen with them because if they're going to aggressively go after a quarterback, it could be him. It might be him. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll go after so, Minshew. Yeah, what what are you so what are you if if Minshew is available like do you think Minshew number 1 will he have interest number 2 what what do you want for him if the team is desperate enough to want him that bad? I'm not I'm not trading Minshew unless I get at least a third. Hmm. Because I'm not interested. He's like 900,000. I think he's $900,000 next year or something. I don't know what he he's he's not that much money for a backup. So you're going to get a, a year backup. 
I, I would say, you know, I would say keep them a year. I, I, you could even open the competition if you want. I don't care. Let, you know, let the competition, the better man will win. I think it brings out the best in both guys. Yeah, I agree. No, definitely. I mean, it could be either hurt starting or a competition. I agree. D train with the super chat. Appreciate it very much. Says Eagles have always had a lot of success with high level safety play. Uh, high level safety is allowed for OK corner safety is by yeah. far a better value. I agree. Yeah, I, I think the Eagles value safety probably a little more, uh, you know, than the second corner compared to second corner. So yeah, I, I agree. Um, I I mean. I know, I, I know, uh, uh, the honey badger is available, but he's thirty years old. Yeah, I don't um, know, man. Jabril Peppers interests me because I think, I think he's got some versatility. He's coming off torn ACL, but I don't think he would cost you a lot of money. And then if we could go somehow get Kyle Hamilton, I'm, I'm all for that. Oh, I want to ask you a question. So people have been talking about uh, Michael Thomas. Okay, now I don't, I don't even remember what happened to Michael Thomas a couple seasons ago. Like, what injury did he have, and how is he has he been out for this long? I I, I forget what I forget what exactly was going on. I, I think it was a few things going on, um, but he had an injury. I'm, I want to see. I kind of want to see what. Uh, I want to see what his contract is real quick. He's got Hold two on. more years. I know he's got he's got a few years left. I think. Yeah, I think he just signed a, a big contract. 2019, he signed a contract, I think. Let's see. Michael Thomas. So, Michael Thomas is signed through 2024. Mm. He's uh, going to make base salary of $15 million. He's got a $2,400, $24 dollar cap hit. Um, let's see if they trade him pre-June. So... They the the Saints would have to be willing to eat twenty two million dollars mm. of his money. So it, it may it may not it may not cost the Eagles that much to get him. But the question is, would the would they would they do it? Yeah, if I mean, they trade him post June, it's fifteen. They would save fifteen million. So it looks like if the Saints are going to trade him, they're going to trade him after June first, and it would cost the team fifteen million dollars. He's a lot of money. I mean, I Saints can't are, see the Eagles spending that much money. No, I don't. I don't either. I mean, I mean, the Saints are on a rebuild. I mean, pretty much going towards a rebuild at this point. I mean, so the, he. I don't know. It's either that it's a contract I, they just can't afford to get rid of. Or, I'd pass uh, on him. Yeah. I would pass on him. I'd rather go Mike Williams, DJ Chark, uh, Christian Kirk in the slot. You know, you know, if DK Metcalf does really become available for a trade, I would jump all over that. But I'm not. Michael Thomas seems like too much money, too too many injuries, missed the whole year. I, nah, I'm okay. Yeah, no, it's gonna be way too much money. Um, but yeah, guys, we're we're, we're about, about an hour and seventeen minutes. Um, I know we got some things. Uh, we were late too, on top of it, so I want to give an extra few minutes there because of my my doing. It's um, all good. Um, yeah, so uh yeah, we're we're gonna be ready for we're ready for the offseason, we're ready to go. Um I'm actually excited for the Super Bowl this year, ready to ready to watch that and um see. I love the, these ice you ever have the ball ice? No. The ice balls. You gotta get the death. I love ball these ball ice balls. They're, they 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 take forever to melt. I like these balls. <laughs> balls <laughs> So, uh, 229 in the chat, uh, 241 in the chat, I should say. Uh, much love to everybody that's in here today. If you guys haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. If you guys haven't, cover the Eagles every day. Like the stream if you haven't. Subscribe to Philly 500. Uh, we both have channel membership videos, so definitely click on the links in our descriptions uh, for both of the memberships. We're doing reactions to draft highlights and conspiracies and all that type of stuff that you're going to love. Yeah. Um, so, definitely check all that out. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. So, we're going to be on Philly 500's channel next uh, next Saturday, Friday. Oh, next Friday. Sorry, um, Friday. next Friday. Um, Joey's got about... Joey's got some res like uh like like boyfriend responsibilities some... <laughs> to do. <laughs> yes, matrimonial yes. dudes, um, But yeah, but other than that, guys, uh, we'll we'll we're gonna have a lot of content out, so we'll we'll definitely be back soon. So, yep. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Five hundred. Anything? Nah, I just hope everybody has a. Uh, uh, everybody has a great a great weekend. What the hell is five? You want to buy some? What the hell's a death stick? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's from Star Wars. <laughs> oh, death stick. 
Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a uh, cigarette. Dude, Star Wars. That's what what about that episode Boba Fett? Yeah. So I good. was flipping out, dude. Yo, yeah. that thing is awesome. It was awesome. No, everybody have a great weekend. Next yeah. week is Super Bowl. And then once the Super Bowl's over, you know, it, it, it's gonna be like scouting combine, free agency. It's gonna come quick, man. I can't wait. Football goes so late anymore, man. I mean, we're in February. I know. It's, it's crazy. It, it, and free agency is going to come really quick, and the draft is going to come really fast. Like March I, and April I'm not going to. I'm not going to complain for for channel purposes. I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's really good. Really close together. So, all right, guys, you guys have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next week. All right, guys, subscribe to both channels. If you guys haven't liked the stream, and I'll see you guys later. Yeah, peace, peace, peace out.